Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Mount Shasta in Northern California, still part of the Cascades. And so what we can do on the USGS side is to work on research and to work on our volcano monitoring. There are many volcanoes in the Cascades. USGS went red alert. So why can't anyone say if this stops at Mount Hood? September. 2025, through the endless quiet stretches of Oregon's forests and the shadow-draped profiles of volcanoes that define the state's spine, a tremor echoes, barely perceptible at first. Scientists at the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory begin their work as they always do, examining real-time seismic feeds and ground deformation data streaming from the state's volcanic peaks. This time, though, alarm spreads rapidly. The USGS issues a red alert, a term reserved for confirmed eruptions or imminent significant volcanic activity, recognizable for its rarity and urgency. Headlines across the Pacific Northwest seize upon these words. Sudden crust movement below Oregon, USGS issues, red alert echoing across cities and towns, stirring a wave of nervous anticipation from Portland's bustle to the pines around ancient calderas. Beneath Oregon's silence, there is always potential for change. Every rumble and sharp spike on a seismograph is another line in the ongoing dialogue between the surface and the volatile world below. But this time, the signals are far more intense and notably interconnected. Not another routine tremor, but a coordinated sequence of ground movements felt most strongly along a corridor between Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and Oregon's own Mount Hood forces the USGS and its partners to ramp up their response. A red alert here isn't merely a warning. It's a recognition that something profound is happening beneath the state's storied peaks. Airlines scramble to update routes as the aviation color code is elevated to orange, one level below the highest warning. Emergency services across the Pacific Northwest stand ready, dusting off dormant protocols. Residents in towns from Eugene to Bend tune into newscasts with a mix of skepticism and anxiety, uncertain about what the coming days might bring. As seismic instruments hum and maps begin to populate with clusters of quakes, one question reverberates louder than the rest. What has disturbed the old order beneath the Pacific Northwest? And what could this red alert mean for Oregon's near future? Cascades in motion. To understand the current unease, one must consider the restless backbone of the Northwest, the Cascade Range, a line of volcanic peaks forged over millennia of tectonic conflict. Here, the North American plate overrides the subducting Juan de Fuca plate, creating conditions where melting rock feeds magma chambers that periodically break the surface in dramatic eruptions. In July 2025, decades of steady monitoring took a sharp turn. An earthquake swarm of unusual size and intensity was detected beneath Mount Rainier. More tremors in a few hours than had ever been recorded at that volcano in modern history. These were not mere aftershocks, but a sustained flurry, suggesting deep, persistent movement of magma. Seismologists watched in growing concern as the swarm extended geographically, with signals suggesting link disturbances stretching from Rainier South toward Mount St. Helens and Mount Hood. Satellite feeds and ground-based instruments were immediately put to the test. Using Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, or INSAR, researchers tracked subtle up and down movements in the ground surface, a few millimeters here, a centimeter there, undetectable to the naked eye, but clear evidence of magma shifting at depth. It was as though the very crust of the Cascade Corridor was pulsing in near unison, hinting at a shared system of fractures below. This synchrony was new and unsettling. Traditionally, volcanoes have been modeled as relatively isolated, their eruptions assumed to be triggered mostly by local conditions. But now, 
evidence was mounting that stress, magma, or both could transfer through deep channels connecting one mountain's fate to another's. Hazard maps drawn in neat circles around individual peaks were suddenly being re-examined by scientists. If a disturbance could reverberate from Washington down into Oregon, what else could travel these hidden highways through the crust? For geologists and emergency officials, the prospect was sobering. A volcanic chain need not erupt all at once to cause widespread disruption. One breach might destabilize a neighbor down the line or send warning signals that pressure is building in places thought dormant. The unmistakable message from the ground was that the Pacific Northwest's volcanic heart was beating together, at least for now. From swarm to alert. As the tremors multiplied and newly observed fractures mapped beneath Oregon's deep forests, decision makers were faced with a critical threshold. When does anomaly become emergency? That answer crystallized with the USGSs for certain segments of the Cascades, an unequivocal signal that extraordinary volcanic activity is either occurring or on the cusp. For many Oregonians, this news arrived as a shock. Volcanoes exist in the landscape and popular culture, but eruptive activity is mostly a feature of history books, not everyday life. Yet the signals were unmistakable. The largest earthquake swarm ever recorded at Rainier, coincident disturbances at St. Helens, and, for the first time, meaningful signs of new magma movement beneath Mount Hood painted a picture of a system whose usual balance had tipped. Public announcements began speaking of a magma link, a connected system beneath multiple volcanoes. Satellite data and seismological models suggested the theoretical possibility that neighboring peaks and calderas could share not just risk, but the mechanisms by which stress and magma migrate. Suddenly, the entire corridor was under heightened scrutiny. Could it really be responding as a chain, its energy distributed along hidden lines? Within days, the impacts started to ripple outward. Aviation authorities swiftly raised warnings, with the international color code flipping to orange, a signal to all airlines that heightened vigilance was needed and routes might need alteration. Local governments across the state unfurled and updated emergency plans previously relegated to routine drills. In towns and cities, communities reached for answers to urgent new questions. Could a major eruption take place in days or hours? If the signals deep below are interlinked, is any part of the region truly isolated from the threat? While science offered few certainties, it was clear that vigilance was now imperative. As the line between theoretical possibility and plausible risk became increasingly blurred, Oregon stood alert, its communities compelled to contemplate threats as real and present, not distant and abstract. Faults and fissures. Tracing Oregon's tectonic vulnerability requires understanding the intricate, multi-dimensional network beneath its volcanic peaks. Unlike the linear and more predictable faults of California, the hazards in this region follow a web of ancient fractures and shifting stress, products of centuries of continental collision. The Cascade volcanoes at the surface are only the final result of processes unfolding deep beneath. Over the years, seismologists and volcanologists have generally mapped each summit as a distinct hazard with its own magma chamber and eruption signature. But the extraordinary events of July and September 2025 prompted a reevaluation. The synchronized readings across several peaks, matched by satellite-detected surface changes, suggested a possible system of old, interconnected channels and cracks through which magma or pressure could migrate over great distances. Adding to the complexity, researchers at Oregon State University have predicted that an offshore volcano, Axial Seamount, is very likely to erupt within 2025. This is notable not only as a scientific achievement, forecasting an eruption with more than a few hours notice, but as a sign of the interconnectedness of volcanic and tectonic forces in this region. 
Ocean bottom sensors, seismic networks, and satellite models all reinforce the point. Magma and stress can move both vertically and laterally, impacting seemingly faraway regions in ways that defy older, isolated models. Nothing in the recent events can conclusively prove a direct link between the undersea volcano and terrestrial peaks. However, the near simultaneous increase in activity and ground deformation calls attention to broader questions scientists are now urgently exploring. How much do these hidden conduits connect and how transferable is the risk across them? There are still limits. The exact pathways are invisible. Their precise impacts open to continued debate and research. But few doubt now that Oregon's apparent stability rests on a complexity that is only partly mapped and newly scrutinized in the wake of this year's extraordinary activity. Forecasting the Abyss If predicting eruptions is part science, part art, the challenge has rarely been as steep as it is now in the Pacific Northwest. Volcanologists use a modern toolkit ranging from highly sensitive seismometers and GPS stations to satellites employing advanced radar, each designed to track minuscule shifts, gas emissions, or underground magma movement. With the red alert, this network of technology was brought fully online. Instruments covering the slopes of Rainier, St. Helens, Hood, and now the broader Cascade Corridor send a torrent of data to supercomputers and analysts. Models churn on the basis of every new microquake and centimeter of crustal change. Yet even these advances are laced with uncertainty. The red alert is a statement about risk and probability, not a guaranteed forecast. While earthquake swarms and ground deformation often precede eruptions, many such episodes have passed without any surface event. Volcanic systems can build toward eruption, then release tension in silence, or stall entirely for months or years. For those living beneath these peaks, and for scientists responsible for public warnings, this uncertainty is haunting. The lessons of St. Helens' 1980 eruption remain vivid. Warning signs can be clear, but the exact timing or scale of the next eruption can be elusive. And the new potential for interconnected signals and migrating stress suggests that traditional assumptions about which volcano is the next to go are now up for debate. Still, the value of monitoring is beyond question. With the best possible information, even a few hours or days of advance warning can save lives, direct evacuations, and protect public safety in ways unimaginable just decades ago. Cascading Peril Should the warning signals translate into eruptive action, the impacts will be profound. Oregon's modern society, its roads, rail lines, pipelines, and economic lifelines are all shaped by centuries of settlement across a land riddled with hidden faults and volcanic deposits. Interstate highways run precariously close to towering volcanoes. Water infrastructure is built atop ancient tephra fields. Even digital age data centers rest on land whose stability is newly in question. An eruption, even if confined to one volcano, could ground commercial flights for weeks, affecting not only local travel, but the entire economy of the Pacific Northwest. Ash plumes, even modest ones, have a history of closing airspace from Seattle to San Francisco, and high-altitude winds can carry particles east for hundreds of miles, affecting infrastructure far afield. The regional economy is intricately tied to the smooth running of ports, transport, and energy networks. Ash fall, ground shaking, or ground rupture could disrupt supply chains and daily routines for millions. Recovery will be measured in weeks, months, or longer. The memory of Mount St. Helens' 1980 eruption, when the ash cloud circled the globe and buried highways, reminds us that the direct and secondary effects of these events can be both immediate and prolonged. Emergency managers across Oregon are well poised by years of planning, and recent drills and exercises have turned theoretical hazard scenarios into actionable plans. Hospitals check medical supplies, schools review evacuation steps, 
and city councils activate their communication strategies. Yet the region's interconnectedness is as much a vulnerability as a strength. The prospect of sustained isolation, uncertain access to resources, and the very real limits of rapid recovery are now newly present in the minds of planners, scientists, and citizens alike. Societal Tremors Perhaps most profound is how this new landscape of risk transforms daily life. The abstract dangers once relegated to museum displays or annual safety drills are now the substance of headline news and neighborhood conversation. Oregon communities, especially those closest to the volcanic corridor, move quickly from general awareness to active preparation. Families check emergency kits, stock up on essentials, and review evacuation maps. Local officials redouble efforts to reach all residents, ensuring information spreads beyond digital divides. School leaders update not only evacuation plans, but strategies for reuniting families in case normal routines are upended. Social media amplifies the community response. Hashtag Oregon Red Alert gains traction, carrying both video evidence and rumors. City leaders, scientists, and public officials work to counter misinformation, providing up-to-date safety advice and plain-spoken explanations. Public forums, remote and in-person, buzz with questions about the changing nature of risk. How soon? How far? How severe? In the process, society itself shifts. For years, the dangers lurking beneath Oregon's mountains seemed remote, if not implausible. Now, with data confirming real and remarkable activity, a collective recognition emerges. Preparedness is not just an individual responsibility, but a communal one. People rediscover the value of old skills, mutual aid, effective communication, and adaptation. The fundamental uncertainty at the core of volcanology is matched by a public consciousness growing more attuned to the rhythms and warnings of the land beneath them. Anxiety surges, but so does resilience. The true tremor may be psychological, a sense that the normal order is temporarily inaccessible, replaced by an urgent awareness of nature's power and unpredictability. Restless land endures. No alert, however grave, can reveal the future in full detail. As September 2025 draws on, teams of scientists, emergency responders, and everyday citizens watch and wait. Data accumulates. Volcanoes smolder, sometimes only metaphorically, beneath their snow-capped cones or ocean waves. The imminent future is uncertain, but the present is united by vigilance. Oregon's communities are reminded of deeper truths. This land was born out of fire and fracture, shaped by rhythms both violent and serene. The Cascades, from Rainier in the north to Hood in the south and the hidden expanse of Axial Seamount beneath the sea, will continue to stand watch. Perhaps the current surge will fade without major eruption, perhaps not. Either way, the lessons of these weeks, the importance of preparation, sound science, and communal resilience will linger long after headlines shift. Preparedness is the only certainty. Emergency plans, communication, and community bonds strengthened in anticipation of what could come. The margin between knowledge and mystery narrows, but never vanishes. As Oregon's story is written in the tremors beneath its feet, the community's ability to adapt, to live with uncertainty, draw upon science, and trust in mutual support beats just as steadily as the instruments that measure the land's hidden heart. If this account of Oregon's awakening crust has broadened your understanding or inspired new questions, let it serve as reminder. The earth is alive, and so are we. Warnings, when heeded, are not invitations to panic, but to prepare. In that shared readiness lies true resilience, a legacy as enduring as the peaks themselves.